Okay, we set. All right, here we go. after six again and I'm excited to kick back after the workday to pick the brains of one of the country's greats. Today we're hanging out with a young, brilliant data analytics expert, the mastermind behind the data science startup Thinking Machines, Stephanie C. Stephanie, super Hi. to see you. Huh? Hey, how are you? <laughs> well, here we are, Stephanie. I think you're a math expert, right? <laughs> So we've got to start off with that question. Why math, Stephanie? Oh, that's kind of funny because um, I started enjoying math because it was the one subject in school where I didn't have to memorize anything. I went to St. Jude, a very traditional, very strict uh, Chinese school in Manila. And uh, you had to memorize like eight pages of Chinese every single day, okay. right? And when you're six years old, it's not the most fun thing in the world. So the only class where I could get away with not really studying was math because yeah. all you had to do is you look at the formula, you figure out what the formula does, and that's, that's so, it. Steph, you're there, um, but you end up at Stanford. I mean, how, how did that journey take place? That's a big step from the Philippines all the way out to, to Stanford. Yeah, well, I, I really wanted to study at a really good engineering school. Okay. Um, I really like applied, uh, applied mathematics, and I wanted to try studying at mm. um, one of the top engineering schools in the world. Uh, the funny story behind that is yeah. that my parents didn't want me to leave the country. Um, but I begged, I pleaded, and they said, okay, okay, only if you get into Stanford will we let you study. That's a, that's a great story. Did you apply Stanford anywhere else or was just Stanford? No, they wouldn't allow me to apply anywhere no, I, else. I can't think of anyone in the world who'd apply only to Stanford. You know, that's, uh, that's a tough one. And there you go, you got in. I got yeah. really lucky. Yeah. I think that's, uh, I think, been a very strong theme in my life so far. So you, you get to Stanford and uh, you get a uh, a range of choices with which to concentrate or, or focus on. Uh, so I was taking math classes, I was taking computer science classes, mm. um, I was selling ads for the school newspaper. When I was in school was when uh, newspapers uh, really started to transition, uh, like fully transition away Sorry, from digital, uh, printed yeah. to digital. So I was going uh, around selling online ads to people okay. um, and learning uh, Google Analytics and learning uh, how do you measure page views, how do you start charging people for these things. And I found it so interesting in terms of uh, the statistics behind it and the connection to business and how the information industry was changing. And so that's why I ended up specializing in computational statistics yeah. in college. What a fascinating field, Steph. So you're there, you're doing well at Stanford, you're studying a new field, and then you end up at Google. You know, how did, how did that happen? And that's an interesting story because uh, when I applied to Google out of in, in college, um, they actually rejected me. Oh dear. Yeah, yeah. Okay. which uh, I think is a really important part of life for, uh, for for people, right? You have to you have to just try things, and failing is not a badge of failure. Yeah. I think that's the most important thing. Um, I learned uh, working internationally that uh, if you are trying to build something new, mm -hmm. uh, you are going to fail. So you really have to think about the ways in which you can fail forward, fail and learn. So instead of joining Google, I started a startup with two friends of okay. mine tell, in college. Tell us about that startup. Oh. Um, my goodness, that startup was also a failure. Yeah, but, but that's okay. <laughs> we also want to hear about the failures. I mean, this is uh, fun. So that, what was yeah. the idea behind that first startup? Um, me and uh, two friends from the journalism school uh, wanted to build an online publication right. that featured, you know, the, the uh, best technologists in the world, right, okay. in the tech industry. And we actually raised $200,000. I was the CTO. Yeah. Uh, my two friends, uh, one was the CEO, one was like the... Um, editor-in-chief, yeah. very fancy titles for yeah. three 21-year-olds. <laughs> and that lasted how long? Uh, um, is it months, a year? Six months. I think wow. the philosophy, and yeah. I, I strongly believe in this, is you structure the experiment right. in a way where you run towards failure as fast as you can, yeah. right? Because yeah. it's going to fail or succeed, and prolonging it doesn't help anybody. So so that, that one didn't work out, and, and what was the next step after that? Google was already very big when I joined. That's right. Uh, there were 15,000 people then. Yeah. I think they're more like 50,000 people Amazing. now. Amazing. And, and when you're an organization that's that big, um, you are... Uh, more structured. They give you a specific role. It's not like yes. you were doing before, fixing things no. everywhere. 
I wasn't Miss Fix It yeah. anymore. Yeah. Um, I was instead Miss Improve This One Recommendation That's Engine correct. Metric by yeah. 0.1%. And that problem was worth millions of dollars to Google, right? Okay, Steph, we'll figure out a little bit more about you and technology, but we'll do it the true or false way. Is that all right? All right, let's all do right, it. Let's do it. Let's do it. First question. Would you rather be lucky than smart? True or false? True, wouldn't you? I don't know, I don't know. You have bought cryptocurrency, true or false? False. Oh. I'm very scared of cryptocurrencies. I don't believe in them. Love life is a priority, true or false? You know, I think love is important. Oh, there you go, there you go. We won't ask more, we won't ask more. You have eaten meat grown in a Petri dish, true or false? Uh, True. Ooh. Yeah, I'm very curious about where meat is going and uh, vegetable-based, petri dish-based. I think there's a nice future there. Nice, nice. All right, Hannah, you use smart devices to keep track of your health. True or false? Uh, true. Uh, I, I, I use a, a, an Apple Watch. I also use a Garmin Watch. I, I use it to track my exercise, uh, sleeping nice. patterns and the like. I like it. Nice health. Steph, you spend more money on books than food. True or false? True. <laughs> Don't starve now, Steph. Don't starve. You wear shorts during Zoom calls. True or false? Well, well, well that's tricky. I've only worn it once. So <laughs> I have to say true, but uh, generally I don't know. All right. Steph, big question. Have you Googled yourself? True, true. And a uh, funny story there. There's four Stephanie C's and over the, every couple of years, I Google us and okay. I see how we're doing. Very good. Journalist Stephanie C is doing great. Dancer Stephanie C is open her own studio. Doctor Stephanie C is a, a resident now. So everything's going well for I'm, Stephanie I'm, I'm Googled myself as well. <laughs> So you miss that kind of startup life? I miss startup yeah. life. Yeah, I, I really miss um, uh, working on a cross uh, cross disciplinary team. I really enjoyed being very close to the customer, right? right. Um, and I like being able to act really fast and okay. take a lot of responsibility over what I was doing, whether it was successful or whether it failed, uh, because I thought that was the best way to keep learning. Uh, and that really is what I care most about in life. That does not fit in really well uh, with the Google that, lifestyle. That's interesting. How did Thinking Machines come about? So the process always starts with uh, finding a problem that you can solve uh, and finding an interesting way to solve that problem. Y you know, what I found is that a lot of people had the desire. Okay. Um, almost everybody I talked to wanted to use data to make their decisions better, uh, but they didn't have the tools right. and they didn't have the know-how. And so I started Dingy Machines when I just started helping uh, organizations figure out how to be more organized about how they use data. You sit on the board of BPI Life Assurance. Uh, yeah. How has that been? I've learned so much. Uh, from being there, and I'm, I hope they've learned a little bit from me too. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure they have, and it must. And, and the whole issue of insurance has its own set, I guess, mm -hmm. of statistical analysis as well. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure that you're adding, you know, tremendous value there. As you define success for yourself, for the company, for your team, um, what would make you happiest, Steph? As, as you go on, uh, uh, as far as thinking machines is concerned, I think for me, success is uh, being able to keep learning and growing uh, to solve problems for people while working with um, it's all about people right it yeah. sounds like it's all about people but it's true so i already feel very lucky and very successful and uh, um, my team's expanded recently to singapore and thailand and to just grow in that way and take uh, our, our very filipino hearts out into the region right and say hey we are an excellent business. We are competitive. We're, we're a global level uh, data science group. Uh, that for me, I'm, I'm very proud of that. And I want to keep pushing the envelope on that. I love the fact that you're looking at Southeast Asia the way you do. I'm a great believer in Southeast Asia. And we all have to build linkages between us. So yeah. you're one excellent example of that <laughs> happening. So Steph, you just mentioned that you spend more money on books than, uh, than food. Uh, tell us what books you read. Yeah, um, I've been reading a lot of science fiction lately. Mm -hmm. uh, the book I've been reading, uh, Ministry of the Future, is pretty terrifying. What if climate change goes out of control? Like, what can humans do so about it? So it's a it? scenario. Uh, that's the beautiful thing about science fiction, right? Because it gives you scenarios that under normal circumstances you wouldn't consider. But you know, this pandemic 
has got an arts all living at home, doing different things. Any other hobbies that you have? Oh, wow, I spend way too much time just right in front of my computer. Uh, but I've taken up origami as a hobby. How, how did you learn? How did that come about? Um, YouTube videos. Well, actually, I started doing origami because um, I'm on wow, 500 um, video calls every day. And when you're on all of these calls, it just gets, uh, you just get so tempted to zone out, like start checking your phone, start uh, disengaging. So I actually started just folding paper at my desk. Now they say that you, once you fold too much, then it, it, the thickness becomes, uh, you know, sort of geometric. It becomes very complicated. Right? Exactly. You see, I know a little bit oh about God, origami. So, cool. so the, the, the computer is also very much a part of your life, Steph. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of content that you're looking for when your mind is wandering uh, a little bit and you're not you know focused on the data analytics side um yeah i have been on netflix a lot i'm, I'm one of those people now that watch uh, serial killer documentaries yeah, yeah. on netflix at that's night what, that's good stuff and um you know technology also steph people discuss that it's brought us so many good things and, and i'm a massive believer as well but there's also a dark side mm -hmm. to technology uh, any parts of uh, this advancement in technology that concerns you? Technologists forget about the power of other humans. Um, so when I think about tech and what tech does, it, it's not just the technology, right? It's like, what are humans doing with this tool? And so when you're trying to design solutions, you can't design a pure technology solution because the problem is not pure technology. The problem is uh, people and how are people using this technology. So if you want to solve it, you actually have to take an approach that comes also from the social sciences, also from psychology, also from uh, a study of community. All right, Steph, we're talking about youth and technology. What what are your favorite mobile apps? Tell us a little bit about it. Ooh, okay. So so if we're, we're talking about my favorite apps, yeah. uh, we got to start with Spotify. Okay. Um, I listen to a lot of podcasts on right. there too, not just music. Mm -hmm. um, I have been using the chess.com app a lot. Oh. Just because you know how sometimes you get on your phone and you end up like 30 minutes later, why am I still on my phone? So at least this way, I like turn it Did on, watch I play that a quick movie, game. Um, on chess? Yeah, yeah. 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 It's super, right? On Netflix. The Queen's Gambit. The Queen's Gambit. That was really very, good. Very good. That was really good. I think everybody moved into chess again after that. Exactly. Okay. I hope people play more. Yeah. It's such a fun game. So chess.com, what, chess what's com. next? Uh, the Down Dog app. Um, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm in front of my computer like 18 hours a day yeah. or something. So it's good to like stretch, use this the down dog app. It's a yoga app. thing. It's right? a yoga yeah. app. And number four, grab, but okay. not to get me anywhere, to get the food to come to me. Fantastic. Our life has changed so much, right? We get yeah. food brought to us and all that. And grab does a great job. And the delivery is so fast. Yeah. Like, actually, I, I don't think I can go back to uh, eating out after this. And five, Twitter. Uh, mm. But I've really been trying to control my Twitter usage. I try to keep my Twitter presence like pretty minimal because then you end up doom scrolling. Yeah, what happens to me is that, that thing just keeps it coming. Just keeps coming. It makes me very nervous, so I don't use Twitter, but uh, but I can understand how it's useful. That's my favorite my, five. My what mobile are your apps? favorite five? Okay, a little bit different from yours. So uh, let me start with the first one, uh, uh, Rever. You've probably never heard of Rever, but I like the motorcycle. And Rever is an extraordinary app because uh, it tracks you, tracks where you're going, and then it turns into a 3D movie afterwards, so you can see yourself cool. moving. Yeah, yeah, it's very, very good. Uh, I like Instagram. Uh, nice. It helps me keep in touch with family, with friends. Uh, I like to just take photographs as well and share them there, so I found it kind of fun. Um, I like Goodreads. It's a great uh, app if you like to read. Uh, it keeps track of your books, tells you what other people think, you see what other people read. Fourth app, uh, I like Audible. Um, I'm a great believer in uh, listening to books as well. I like to read. Uh, but there are times when you're tired, you're moving in a car, and you like to keep following the book. And, and the Kindle does a great job as well with Audible. The two interplay. So you stop listening on one side, and it comes back into the Kindle, into the same page. So I use Audible and Kindle uh, jointly. So fifth app, Steph, been enjoying uh, the new BPI uh, uh, mobile app. It's got this customizable uh, QR code now. So if you have to pay someone, uh, you can make the QR code the exact amount of money that that person, you can actually give a name to the QR code. Uh, it's kind of fun. It's a nice way to uh, to settle things. So hopefully you can try it at some point in time. So I'm definitely going to check that out. Uh, Steph, it's been super having you. I've loved hearing about your professional life, your education, and what you like. On the data analytics side, we hope uh, that we can continue working together uh, across BPI, across the Ayala Group, uh, keep doing things together. You're doing just a great job in reinventing that space. There's so much for all of us to learn. It's been fabulous having you here. 
Thank you so much. It's been so cool to get out of the house, talk about the things I care most about. Yeah, I'm going to hold you to that. Let's work on more data things together. Absolutely. Looking forward to it, Steph. Awesome. <laughs>